just moments ago here in the United States Senate, a fifth Republican senator, John Thune of South Dakota, announced that he was undecided on whether or not he's going to support Andy Puzder to be Labor Secretary. Thune joins four other Republican senators now who are saying they're on the fence about him. Now, on the fence is not a no, but with the avalanche of bad news that is striking Andy Puzder, this might be the nominee that Democrats are able to stop. The most frightening thing was leaving because once I made that break and once I made it public and remember my ex-husband was a public figure, everyone knew him and she said, I will see you in the gutter. This will never be over. You will pay for this. The damage that I sustained, you can't see. It's, it's permanent, permanent damage, but there's no mark and there never was. They don't hit you in the face. They're, they're too smart. They don't hit you in front of everyone. During uh, his divorce from his first wife, she accused him of physical abuse. She later went on the Oprah Winfrey show, uh, in kind of incognito, repeated this tale of abuse. She's now fully retracting those claims, but it's hard to think of something that this Labor Secretary nominee hasn't been busted doing. While he was CEO of Hardee's and Carl's Jr., those franchises were busted with dozens and dozens and dozens of labor violations, ripping off workers left and right. Uh, and these are not allegations, these were conclusions by the Labor Department at the time. If Republicans are able to push this candidate through the Senate, then they're basically able to approve anybody. Lori Ald wants to know what is his background in labor, and Kat McCauley says, another unqualified candidate, do you think Republicans even care if there's qualifications? So, that's an interesting question. So Betsy DeVos is somebody that you would call unqualified. When she, when she was answering questions at her confirmation hearing, it emerged that she hadn't given thought or wasn't familiar with an, uh, the, the major debates that were going on in education policy. Now, her money had funded one particular side of the debate, but she herself wasn't even familiar with them. Uh, Andy Puzder is, is, is not that kind of unqualified. Now, a, a lot of Democrats uh, would say that he has disqualified himself for the way that he has broken so many labor laws over the years, but you can't say that he doesn't know labor law. In, in other words, nobody knows labor laws better than the CEO of a fast food franchise because what they're trying to do is squeeze every ounce of profit that they can out of all of their workers. And in order to do that, they have to know minimum wage laws, they have to know overtime laws, they have to know child labor laws, uh, and they have to know OSHA regulations and everything else so that they can get as close to the edge of them and often go over the edge and, and, and break those laws, but know when you can break those laws and it, and it not blow back on you, or when you can break those laws and, it's better, and you're better off paying a fine if you get caught than actually following the law. So uh, in, in, you know, when FDR made Joseph Kennedy the first head of the SEC, they said, you know, nobody knows, uh, you know, no, nobody is better to oversee Wall Street than somebody like Joseph Kennedy because he was such a scoundrel on Wall Street before, because he had broken every law before. Now, it doesn't usually work out that that person becomes an effective regulator. In the case of Andy Puzzle, there's no indication it would. It would. But certainly, he knows labor laws inside and out because he has broken so many of them. Andy Puzder, have you decided on how you're going to vote on him, and are you getting a lot of pressure from your state on, on that nomination? Uh, not as much as uh, uh, others, uh, because uh -huh. he hasn't had his hearing yet, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm waiting for his hearing also. I mean, people want to wait and see uh, what his approach is going to be to the issues and also what his response mm -hmm. is going to be to some of the concerns. So, no, I have not made a decision yet, and I think his hearing is scheduled for Thursday, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be watching that closely. Senator Rob Portman right here on the Young Turks just just made news. He becomes the the sixth senator who is now on the fence about Andy Puzder's nomination. As I suspected, I think if you asked a lot of other Republican senators where they are, uh, that you'd get it. You'd get a similar answer: a wait and see. They want to see. They want to see where this one goes, which is. Uh, not what they were saying about a lot of the other nominee, uh, nominees. You know, if you'd, if you'd ask them, they'd say, no, I, this is a qualified person. The president has the ability to choose a nominee, and I'm supporting this person. If you notice, that was not what uh, uh, Senator Portman said about Andy Puzder. They want to know if Senator Portman received donations from Betsy DeVos's family. Ah, that's a good question. Um, I will, I will ask 
his office, or, I, or actually you could, we have written about that. So if you Google an article by uh, Paul Blumenthal in the Huffington Post, we, we took a look at every single uh, senator who voted for her and how much her family had given and how much she personally had given. I don't, I don't know offhand. Uh, I would suspect, yes, uh, DeVos, uh, the DeVos family is, is mostly centered in Michigan. Ohio's not too far away from there. Uh, and, you know, she wasn't lacking for funds and she spread them around pretty widely.